Okay, so you're lying in bed sick, and you're wondering whether you should practice your Qigong. I'm not actually sick, I'm just setting the scene for our topic today. One of the really good things about Qigong is that when you practice regularly, you get sick far less often. And touch wood, I'm not sick right now and I'm not planning to get sick. I've been really fortunate uh, that recently I've been able to practice Qigong really regularly and I have really enjoyed it. And part of that is, well, obviously being committed to Qigong practice. Um, and just the circumstances of my life have, have allowed me to keep up a regular practice. One other thing that's been helpful is a little while ago I set up a new uh, Facebook group called Qigong Every Day. And I might post a link to that in the description below in case you're interested in that. Because it's a group that it's, it's there to support, encourage and inspire people as they develop a habit or maintain a habit of daily Qigong practice. And so people are posting in there regularly about their Qigong practice on a daily basis and of course that creates a bit of accountability for me to make sure that I don't um, skip and miss days unless it's absolutely essential for some reason. And most of the time it's, you know, there's always a, a way you can fit in at least a little. So anyway, back to our main topic today, it is going to be about should you practice Qigong when you're actually sick? Not to prevent getting sick, but when you are sick. It's a question I get asked quite often, because even the best of us, even if we have the best plan and, you know, we can get run down, circumstances in our life can change, you know, through stress, through environmental conditions, through so many different things, and we can end up getting sick. So while regular Qigong practice will help you to not get sick as often, it doesn't make you invincible. It is possible that you will find that you're unwell from time to time, particularly early in your practice, because your body is and your energy is still building its resilience. And so there's a decision to be made about whether you should practice on a given day or not, should you find yourself unwell. So our focus in this video is going to, it's not really going to be on if you have a very serious illness or a chronic illness of some sort. In those situations, um, you'll be fine to try some gentle qigong for sure, but you might want to seek out the specific advice of an experienced qigong teacher or qigong healer who's going to be able to, to help give you really good advice about specifically what you should do to help you in your particular um, condition to help you recover um, and, and rebuild your strength. Our focus is going to be more about those those little illnesses, coughs, colds, flus, headaches, things like that, which again, even for the best of us, we can find that um, we find ourselves becoming run down and having them from time to time. Qigong is so good for so many things, and it's so gentle, so safe, so effective, that we can sometimes think that, well, you can just use Qigong whenever, it's always going to be great. Even with something as gentle, safe, and as effective as Qigong, there still needs to be some wisdom uh, and some judgment and application if we want to get the best results, even with something like Qigong. And so, I'm going to make a little bit of an analogy. I guess to start with, it's important to remember or realize that Qigong, we're working with energy. It is real work. It does take effort. It does take exertion for us to do this. It's gentle, or often gentle, there are strenuous kinds of Qigong. But even that gentle effort does require an effort on our part. So I'm going to make an analogy to another type of exercise which you might be familiar with and because it's a more vigorous type of exercise it might be easier to see and understand how this works in relationship to if you are sick or unwell. So if you've ever had a habit of um, regular aerobic exercise, regular exercise, running, swimming, rowing, cycling, um, something like that, you may have had the experience where You've just felt like you're just starting to come down with some kind of illness. 
you know, a cold or something like that. And you've decided to go and do your exercise anyway. Now, this could go either of two ways. If that infection, that illness has just started, so it's just started to irritate things a little bit, just enough that you've started to, be, to notice it, but it hasn't actually drained your energy reserves yet. The running will stimulate your blood flow, it'll get you breathing deeper, it will to some extent often stimulate your immune system. And so if you do that at an early stage with that illness, that physical activity will actually help you to fight that infection or that illness off. And at the end of it, you're tired from your run, but you've actually helped to clear the infection and you feel much better. You just have to rest and recover from your aerobic exercise and oh, it's like the illness just got driven off by your physical activity. Fantastic result. On the other hand, if that illness has progressed, you know, and there's a fine line here, if it's progressed just a little bit more, and so it's taken hold in your system a little bit more, the, the energy reserves of your body have um, been drained and used up a little bit more, and you go and do that vigorous activity, okay, it gets the blood flowing, it gets you breathing deeper, the immune system tries to get boosted up, but it's not quite strong enough to fully drive things off. After your exercise, you're tired from the exercise, and you haven't succeeded in driving that infection out, you're just more susceptible to get sicker. And often you find that you get sicker faster and it may even last longer because you've drained your resources by doing that exercise. Something similar can happen at the other end of an illness once you've started to recover. So you've, your body has succeeded in fighting most of the illness or all of the illness off, but there's still um, stagnant energy is how we'd refer to it in Qigong or traditional Chinese medicine and this means things like metabolic wastes left in or between your cells there's tensions in your nerves and in your muscles and things like this and this actually slows down the process of recovery if you go and do some gentle aerobic exercise at that point again often this is going to get all that energy moving it's going to get the blood flowing it's going to um, get the nerves uh, the muscles moving so it helps to release tension it can help you to clear those wastes out and help you to recover faster on the other hand if you do that too soon and you still maybe have some of that infection hanging around or your energy hasn't built up enough again you get things moving but it leaves you too tired and it can actually send you backwards so many of those same things apply to Qigong, and some of it's direct, you know, direct correlation, breathing deeper, getting the blood flowing, things like that. Of course, though, we have a lot more flexibility with Qigong. Many of the practices are very gentle, um, so we're going to be able to use Qigong in a, in a wider range of situations where we may have some kind of illness. Uh, and there are also some other more direct effects in terms of sending the energy quite specifically to places that may need it. So, you know, yes, there's going to be a broader range of situations where Qigong practice is still going to be useful for us. But, again, it's important to remember that gung, that work, requires exertion. It does actually take some exertion to move that energy around to stimulate it without Qigong practice. And so there may be times when you're progressed into too far into the illness or the wrong stage and your energy reserves have um, got too low and so that that practice may actually tie you out too much. So what's the solution? It's to practice with awareness to realize this principle of your energy levels, your underlying energy levels and your body's capacity, your energy's capacity to deal with things. And see how you're feeling before you start practicing. Spend some time tuning into your energy, paying attention to your body. You can even in your mind, with words, ask yourself, is this Qigong practice going to help me feel better or is it gonna tie me out too much and leave me feeling worse? and listen internally for the answer. Your body knows itself quite well most of the time and can give you really good answers. And if, it's, if the answer is no, that it's gonna tire you out sometimes, sometimes the best thing to do with your energy is simply to rest. Sometimes your best Qigong practice 
can be to have a sleep or something like that if that's what you need rather than trying to push yourself into work and moving the energy sometimes the best thing is rest but ask yourself if it's a good idea to practice tune in to whether you feel like it's going to leave you feeling better and energized or worse and listen to that answer something else you can do if even after that you're still not sure is you can try doing just a little bit of something very gentle a very gentle practice um, the five waves practice that I, I put up in, an, in, a, in a recent vlog um, maybe I'll put a link to that below uh, so you can check that out um, really gentle you could start just doing some of that and then after you've done a little bit pause and check your energy again do you feel better stronger more energized or are you starting to feel tired and fatigued pay attention listen if it's time to rest rest if you are feeling more energized again you might decide you know what that's enough for today I got a little boost I got my energy flowing that's all I needed or you might think you know what it's okay to move on to some some uh, qigong practices that maybe take even a bit more energy something like 12 rivers is fantastic the way that it moves the energy through all of the organ meridians it can really help to clear stagnancy and help to get energy uh, moving in a way that will help you to recover but you know whatever the practices that you choose you might move on to something else but again very important as you go through stop every now and then check pause check yourself how am I feeling? Is this boosting me up or is it tiring me out too much? When you start to feel that fatigue, it's probably time to rest and end your practice. Bring it to close, settle all your energy down and bring it to close for the day. Of course, there might be situations where um, you're not even able to do a moving practice, for example, um, but, you, but you still think maybe some practice would be useful to you. Now, of course, there are things within Qigong, you, it can be as simple as doing some breathing exercises, using your intention to wash energy through, things like that. And you can try those as well. But still remember, there is exertion involved with those. So you still need to just check yourself from time to time. Is this helping me feel better or not so much? And then the last thing that I would recommend, and you may have access to this or you may not, is... You know, at times when you may feel that you're not uh, not able to practice for yourself for whatever reason, it can be really useful to seek the help of someone who has skill with qigong healing, someone who can help move and flow the energy for you. Um, that really is the purpose of it. Most of what you do in qigong healing can be accomplished by your own practice. But it takes a lot of practice and skill and time and effort to be able to do that. Whereas someone who is skilled at Qigong healing is able to step in and help you out with that process. And that might be something that will also be really useful for you to help you to, um, to recover and rebuild and, 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 and get back to, to health more quickly. Um, we do have an, an introduction to Qigong healing course coming out I don't have a set date for it yet. Soon. Probably in the next couple of months at Long White Cloud Qigong. So uh, if that's something you're interested in, it uh, might be something to keep an eye on. Um, make sure you, uh, I guess, probably sign up to the email newsletter. I'm bound to put something on here as well. So if you subscribe to the vlog, you'll probably hear about it as well. Um, if that's something you're interested in. Um, ways within that to help yourself and of course to help other people around you family friends to help them um, to keep their energy healthy and strong as well okay as usual i hope you enjoyed this uh this vlog if you found it interesting i do you know i hope other people are going to find this and it's going to be a tool to share things about qigong um, things that will help people in their lives so if, if that's the case maybe you could like the video you could subscribe to the channel you could share this video with other people that would be great it'll help other people to find the channel as well and i look forward to seeing you on the next one